everyone. Uh, very excited to introduce our next guest. This is Pam Sherman. She is a wellness specialist. She is the CEO and founder of The Perfect Balance, international motiva motivational speaker, coach, and author. She was involved in fitness and wellness as a group exercise instructor, personal trainer, and running coach for 20 plus years. She's currently on the Fit Radio app as a cardio and strength coach, as well as an ambassador for Liebert Fitness Company and the Abs Company, where she creates videos and writes articles. Uh, her mission is to help women take better care of themselves and their health. Pam empowers women to lose weight and gain confidence. She wants to help every single woman feel great in their own skin. Uh, after getting hit by a car and having some minor injuries, Pam is more passionate than ever about spreading the word of self-care. Her tagline is, your health is your greatest wealth. I love that. Uh, you can find her on Instagram, and her handle is Perfect Balance Guru. Let her inspire you and help you live smarter, not harder on her YouTube channel, The Perfect Balance. Thank you and for being here. Welcome, Pam, to the show. Um, so thrilled to have you. And um, we want to just dive right in. So if you could, you know, share your story, tell us a little bit about who you are, um, what inspired you to get into the industry and take it from there. That'd be great. You bet. Thank you. That was a beautiful introduction. You kept talking like, who is she talking about? Like. <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, right here. <laughs> I'm right here. I'm right here. You know, I've always been active. I grew up with two older brothers and this is in the seventies when your parents just kicked you out the door and said, go play. So we had to play and play and play. And then my dad was a really great runner and he was a jogger before it was super cool. Okay. And I remember being 11 and saying, can I run with you? And he was very nice. He took me to a high school track because we lived in Connecticut and it was very hilly. Mm -hmm. And I ran two miles without stopping and it was the greatest feeling in the whole world mm. and I thought someday I'm going to beat him because he just kept going and going and going <laughs> but that feeling was what I was after and as an 11 year old I ran on a regular basis because I just liked the way it made me feel and then I did track and cross country and I was very middle of the road I was never the best never the worst but loved the thing of working out with my friends and giggling and laughing and you know all the good stuff yeah and then after college, I moved from, I grew up in Ohio and went to the Ohio State University. Uh, um, I came out to California and the universe put me in contact with my roommate who was a group exercise instructor. And I would go take all her classes and she's like, Pam, you love working out so much. Why don't you take this class at our local junior college on how to be an instructor? I was like, wait, what? They actually teach you this? <laughs> so I did that. And I was pregnant with my first son, who's now 23. And it was, besides asking my husband out, the best thing I have ever done for myself. Aww. Because it taught you how to teach a warm up, how to hear the music, how to cue, how to um, lead a class. So you get up high and then you go down low. And then, you know, the cool down, I taught you everything. Yeah. And then after I got certified doing that, I thought, well, I might as well get personal trainer certified because I'm guessing a bunch of the women in my classes are going to want more one-on-one -on -one, um, training. So I yeah. did that a few months later and that was a, an amazing job while my kids were growing up. I have two kids they are now 23 and 21. So I would, I could still carpool and be a soccer mom and make their lunches and make dinners and breakfast and all that stuff and do teaching and personal training you know, on the side while they were at school. And when they were little kids, it would, we would say, let's go to the club to play with your friends because for them, it was a chance to marry another kids. It was always a positive thing. Yeah. And then when my youngest daughter, my youngest uh, got into first grade, I was like, I have six hours a day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I could actually make my, get my own business and go to women's houses. I was stuck in the gym while my kids had to go to daycare. So then I branched out and a bunch of my girlfriends started running half marathons are like, Pam, you need to coach us. Cause at that point I should have gone back after high school. My friends and I were not good enough to run at the Ohio state university. <laughs> so we decided to do the Columbus marathon every year, just because we liked being together. Training was yeah. fun. We didn't really take it too seriously. And I stopped doing marathons a long time ago, but I was, I knew enough. So I started coaching my friends on half marathons. And I had one girl friend who 
wanted to qualify for Boston. So I helped her qualify for Boston. So for me, I think we're all born to do something. And I was absolutely born to be a trainer and a coach. I will tell you this one story. My oldest friend, who I met when I was five and she was three, we were having a debate. I was 11 at the time and she was nine. Okay. Let's go for a run at 11 years old. And she's like, let's have an Eskimo pie. And I'm like, no, no, we'll get a cramp if we have an Eskimo pie. Let's run <laughs> first and then have the ice cream. And I look back and I'm like, I, that's what I was supposed to be doing my whole life. So it's always been a huge passion yeah. for me. I have motivation dripping out of my pores, trying to get women to do more, to make themselves a priority, to work harder than they thought, to yeah. feel amazing in their own skin. Because I see it everywhere. Moms don't put themselves on their list. Right. I don't have time. I can't do it. It's selfish. I'm like, uh, uh-uh, it is self-care. It is not selfish. So I've always tried to help women do more than they thought. And to know, to know that your self-care should be number one, just like in the airplane, you put that oxygen mask on you first. first yeah. When you take better care of yourself, you can take much better care of your loved ones because your cup is filled up. Right. Right. So that's a short, short, long version of how I got into fitness. Very cool. So even at 11, you, you were transforming lives. You, you knew to tell that nine-year-old not to have the dessert first, which is pretty spectacular. <laughs> and, and that's one of the uh, only two fights we've ever been in. And to this day, she does not work out or eat right. And I just love her to death, but I'm like, oh my God, please. Now we're in our fifties. You need to start taking care of yourself. <laughs> you know what? If you can't do it now, you'll, she'll jump on board. She'll jump on board. She will. She will. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about um, some of your biggest challenges, uh, both personally and professionally, and how you've been able to achieve success and where you are in your career? Yes. Um, I grew up in a super dysfunctional household, so I'm certain running was my way out. Both my brothers chose addiction and alcoholism. Um, and it's very hard to grow up on that. And I am very lucky that my body I mean, I was never much of a drinker. I don't drink anymore, but that I craved getting outside in a way for a mental break, as -hmm. opposed to going to the bottle. Um, And that that was very hard. Uh, My dad moved out here. My parents got divorced um, 11 years ago. And he came out to live by me, not with me. He had to be in a senior home. Mm -hmm. And for three years, he declined and eventually died of Alzheimer's. And, you know, I was just thinking back to this. We are so used to doing everything. And I get, you get so caught up in the moment. I didn't ask anybody for help back then. Right. I didn't want to burden my husband with helping me in my emotional state. And as a result, for three years, I was digging a ditch. I was getting up three times a week to teach a 5 a.m. class I would then teach and get my kids ready, lunches packed, get them off to school, go teach another class and go visit my dad and then run errands because I still had to run the household. And then after he died, I had to stop working because it nothing. I had nothing to give. And being a trainer and a teacher, you're give, give, giving. Yeah. And I was just thinking today, I'm not a burden to my husband. None of us should feel like we're burdens. We need help. Mm-hmm. I needed to unload and say, I can't do this. It, this is awful. And just cry. And I I didn't, I didn't cry because I was taught as a young girl, you just put up and get through it. So not asking for help and being too busy and seeing my dad die and doing 800 things a day left me in a really bad state physically and emotionally. So I had to stop teaching for a couple of years. Oh, wow. Okay. And then I got back into it for about a year. And then my accident happened when I was out for a run one day and I got hit by a car, but I'm oh my God. certain that happened for me. The universe said, Hey, you have to reach more women. Yes. It was, uh, more scary now than at the time, but I never would have written books. I never would have gone over to London to speak. I never would have reached as many women as I do now. Had I not been hit, I would have stayed in the classroom. I love teaching. It's yeah. amazing. Um, so the accident put me on a different path, but it's the most amazing path ever because I feel like with social media, with TikTok, I mean, there's no dance, this, this does not dance, but I get to reach more women with my message of there's no quick fixes, ladies. You have to take the time to take care of yourself every single day. Yeah. 
Yeah. I love what you just shared, Pam, because um, there is like, I always hear life is now, you know, time is, is of the essence and all of the things, but until something actually happened, which is the first wake up call I got was literally the week of my wedding. I lost my best friend to suicide was like, what do you have to do now with the life that you get to live? And of course, this is, of course, brought me back to when I had to recover from depression, anxiety, and all of the things. And I was able to recover. She suffered from the same thing. Unfortunately, she decided, you know, to do what she did. But that was the first wake up call. Honestly, that's when I said, you know, I, I need to share my experience. I need to share my knowledge of how I was able to overcome what I did. And I have right now really a moral obligation to, to pass on like this knowledge and work with women in a way so that they really understand they can value themselves. And then ultimately, you know, the second thing was, you know, three years, five years ago, I lost my other best friend because she had a stroke. And, and then most recently, I had lost another really good friend of mine at the age of 44. And so I share all of that to, to share with you all. And then also I'm on the same uh, mindset with you, Pam, is that if you are not taking care of yourself right now, where are you going to be six months from now, a year from now? Not to even mention, where's your family going to be? And who, is, who else is going to be really affected by you not taking care of yourself? Right. So I just want to take that moment to really hone into your message, Pam, that absolutely we have to take care of ourselves. And it's definitely a selfless act and a self self care versus selfish, because ultimately we, we are doing so much automatically and the quality of our service is not going to be the same if we don't take care of ourselves. So I, I, I hear you. I hope, you know, the audience, you are listening and listening and, and hearing that message as well. Yeah. But what incredible work that you get to do now and that now you get to live life on a completely different new perspective that life is now. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 awesome. Um, can you tell so your story is incredible. Um, can you tell us more about how you are now taking this new platform? To, to transform lives, um, you know, what, you know, with what you're doing now with your YouTube channel and TikTok and Instagram and all of these fun, fabulous yes. things that have come up, you know, in the last 20, 10, 20 years. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, you know, I'm very thankful that there was no social media when I first started teaching because we used to wear the thong leotard to teach. And I uh, am Jane Fonda so, style. Oh, hun- we all did fat, thin, everybody. I'm like, that was not a good look for anybody. And I'm so glad there's no pictures floating around out there. Oh, that's so But <laughs> um, since my accident, so that was it's five years in December. Okay. Um, I met a woman who is, we all have angels in our life. She's one of my biggest angels. And I said, you know, I, I have a lot to say. I can talk all day about health and wellness. Um, I'm, I would love to make a website, but I'm, this is not my wheelhouse. Making websites, not my wheelhouse business yeah. is so for her it was very easy and she's like well like would you want to do a, a weekly newsletter I was like yes I do and she's like okay so when somebody signs up they should get a free gift so I started writing and writing and I sent it to her and she's like um this is a book I just want to like your 10 best tips I'm like what do you mean she had self-published before on Amazon she goes you give me 10 more pages this is a um the perfect balance healthy guide to living book and I was okay. like wow Okay. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know. I had six books just organically come up just from my experience, no research, no, you know, anything in there, just my personal life experience, which I never would have done part of this. So I feel like I get to reach more women on their journey. Mm -hmm. The one that I think is the best for women. I 99% of my clients want to lose weight. Okay. And losing weight is all about what you eat. Right. Exercises for your mental health. And, and to get our muscles to stay strong as we age. Right. But I made a workbook for women because they are very short-sighted. Like what are some short-term goals? What are some long-term goals? Let's make some action plans to reach those goals because I'm sorry, weight loss is not the secret. You just can't say, I'm going to lose, I want to lose 15 pounds. It does not work like that. You actually have to take steps to do that. Right. As well as talk about people that are going to sabotage you. I just had one of my clients on Monday or Sunday, tell me 
she went out to lunch with her mother and her best friend. And she told them she's on a challenge and they still offered her dessert three times. You have to know how to say, no, no, thanks. I'm good. And I said, next time that happens, I want you to confront them and say, why are you trying to sabotage me? Good for you. And then just be silent because you feeling great in your body and feeling healthy and strong is so, so important. But women's decisions on their food and drink makes the people they are with uncomfortable. Yeah. So my workbook is great. Um, also with Instagram, got to post what's every day. Name, what's the name of your name of your, um, of that book in particular, the work, uh, the perfect balance workbook. Oh, okay. All right. Just wanted to make sure everyone it's great. That. Yep. Yep. Instagram. I just try to, I'm called the, no, my, my website gal calls me the no nonsense person because I just felt like it is. It's You're not like, like yeah, it's not glamorous. <laughs> it's not sexy. There's no quick fixes. It's consistency day in day out. And like you said, Stephanie, time is going to pass no matter what, right? If you choose to take action six months from now, a lot of great things can happen. But if you go, oh, it's Friday, I can't, oh, I'll start Monday, oh, I'll start after vacation, I'll start. No, 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 no. We are all starting, and Didi has lost many more than most people at our age. You're, you're a little younger than me, Didi. But nonetheless, we've all known people whose lives have been shortened by their choices they have made. And you're like, it didn't have to be like that. Right. Um, and my website gal said, Pam, you got to go on TikTok, seriously. I was like, Ugh. I'm not dancing. She's like, no, no, just it's one minute of information. So I've been posting regularly on there because I feel like there's too much information. If you Google how to lose weight, you might get 5,000 different answers. Oh, yeah. And I'm just very simple, basic. It's about a calorie deficit. I know you love your carbs because you're a woman, but you got to eat more protein than you want. You got to track your food. You can't eat back in your exercise calories. I mean, I'm literally very simple and just please take the time. If you want change, you have to change your daily habits. Right. So I'm trying to reach as many women with don't fall for the quick fix or the fad. And my biggest thing is when anybody asks me about whatever diet is in trend, I say, okay, can you see yourself eating like this during the Christmas holidays? And if the answer is no, you can't do it. Right. <laughs> but that's a great way of putting it. That's a really great way of putting it. If you're not going to have a cookie or a piece of cake or whatever, a roll, don't. Because if you do it now, you're going to gain more weight when you start to go back to eating the way you did. Right. Um, so it's fun. I mean, social media, it's, it's fun because you get to reach more people. I talked to a gal in Canada yesterday who said, hey, I saw you on TikTok and I was just wondering about your coaching. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Yeah, it really is cool. You could be, I mean, you're more, more than likely talking to people over in, you know, in islands over in Asia or, you know, on the coast of South Africa. And I mean, you just never know. That's really, it's really, it's amazing. It's amazing. I like your approach to the, to the no nonsense because it's true. I mean, I think that I'm sure you deal with this. Um, and I'd like to hear more about how you talk to people about um, even just overcoming excuses and um, societal, you know, pressures. Um, to help people with uh, longevity and vitality, right? Um, but I'm sure that this comes up, like you were just saying about the, the, the four-letter word, D-I-E-T. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a billion-dollar industry. Um, so it seems, I mean, everything out there is working against people and, you know, and playing these, these mental games with people and, and manipulating people. And it works or people, you know, the, the industry wouldn't be booming all the time. So how do you, how do you, how do you work around that? What do you, what do you tell your audience? I tell them to not waste their money on any products. They will get the best results eating real food. I love and, it. And for women who, you know, it's hard for us because we love our carbs, like I said, and it's hard yep. to get enough protein. I'm all for buying a really great protein shake just to get more protein in. But besides that, it's real food, but you have to be strong in your convictions. I don't care where you eat out. Every place has protein and veg, mm -hmm. but you just got to say no to everything else. Right. You know, you can't have a drink and an appetizer and an entree and then dessert and then expect to lose weight. Right. Or actually feel good in your body because especially as we get older, our bodies do not process sugar from alcohol or from food or dessert the way it did when we were in our twenties, unfortunately. 
you might get the sugar sweats in the middle of the night. Yes. Um, oh my God. I didn't know that that was a real thing. I thought that was just my body being bad one night. <laughs> it is your body saying, um, I don't like this sugar as you're getting older. That's a yeah. no. Yeah. And it's, it's very, very hard. So it, I ask my clients, when you make a decision, do you want to be happy in the short term or feel great about yourself long term? And how do you want to feel in the morning? Because so much of the food that's out there is short term satisfaction. Uh -huh. And I did have a client who um, she was actually one of my only clients. I did not have a good result with her because she loves to eat out. She couldn't say no. She likes to drink. And I'm like, I, you know what? When we first talked, I'm like, you have to limit your alcohol especially as you get, she's my age, 54, especially as you get older, you cannot drink more than really a drink one or two nights a week. You can't have the bad choices when you eat out sugar. You really should avoid it while you're on the, but the other end is you'll get to fit back into your clothes, right? You'll have mental clarity. You will feel great in your skin and you will age feeling like a rock star. Yeah. But it's a short term happiness that people want. And I'm like, okay, do you want to wake up feeling great every day? Do you want your joints not to ache? Do you want to be able to fit into anything in your closet, no matter what time of the month it is, right? It, the choice is up to you and yeah. you have to be strong in your convictions to make that choice. Yeah. Good for you. I love that. I love that message. I, um, to a brief story too, um, you know, as Didi was talking about, I, um, I, obesity runs in my family. And, um, and I know that there's a, gen a generic, generic, genetic component to it. Um, but at the same time, it's also a story that we tell ourselves, right? You know, this whole idea of, oh, you know, obesity runs in the family and it's no, it's because no one runs in your family, right? Ha ha ha. <laughs> um, but my dad, my dad died from a heart attack at the age of 61 in his sleep. And, um, one of the causes of death on his death certificate was morbid obesity. And I, the word morbid had never become so real until, until he was gone. And it was all about lifestyle choices. I mean, everything that he passed away from was, was preventable. And, um, and so that kind of sent me off on a complete, I was already on a, on a health and wellness journey myself, but that really sent me overboard into, into digging deep and um, into learning that, you know, there, there are no quick fixes and anything that is too good to be true is too good to be true, right? It is. My father-in-law died of obesity as well. Oh, and sorry. It's, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. Well, and I was a source nightmare, right? Because I'm a <laughs> trainer and help people feel healthy. Right. And I don't know if it was my husband or a sister said something like, well, obesity runs in the family. I said, no, it does not. Look at their wedding picture from 1964. Right. They were thin adults. Yeah. Obesity is a result of their lifestyle choices. Right. Yes. Period. Right. And that's why I made the joke I did. It doesn't run in the family. It's because no one runs. I've never heard that. That's a good one. <laughs> you can <could> steal it. <laughs> it's terrible, but it, it's wow. I 100%. And so Pam with, with all of that, right? Like, because of like the whole culture is into instant gratification, right? Like you have the one example of the one clients that can't let go of the drinking and all of the things. So what would you tell someone who is just so stuck, who is like so bombarded with so much information about what to do with like the million of diets? So what are a couple of things that they can start with, like as baby steps, right? So that they can eventually Actually, you know, get on the health and wellness, um, completely like revamp their lifestyle. What would you, sh what would you say as your best advice about that? Well, Didi, I love you say that you said that because I always say baby steps lead to long-term success yes. in our instant society though, people want to lose 10 pounds tomorrow. And unless you get the flu, you are not going to lose 10 pounds by tomorrow. And, then and if you know. do, you're going to gain it right back. I know. I know. And then, and then some, I know. I know. <laughs> now this sounds crazy, but I would say my number one is for people to get regular sleep between seven to nine hours every single night. Yes. That's <laughs> something that I've been saying. Oh my goodness. Go for because, it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, because if you don't get enough sleep, 
your brain is going to crave sugar all day long. You're not going to take the time to make healthy meals. You're not going to want to exercise. You're going to sit on the couch. It affects every single part of your life. Yeah. Now people are like, really? I'm like, who has really? got a bad, who has got a bad night's sleep? And the next day you're like, I'm a slug on the couch. Can't do anything. Right. The second thing I would tell people to do, I'm a big adder of things. Add a glass of water eight times a day. Oh my goodness. I I feel like this show is for me, Pam. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, we all love coffee, right? But you have to drink water. Our body is made up of over 65% water and we are so dehydrated in the morning. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually, this is terrible to say, well, it's not terrible. I wish the soda companies would stop making soda. That is so much sugar that people drink and it has no nutritional value at all, but that's okay. another thing. Okay. So I'd say add water. Second thing, add a cup of vegetables to lunch and to dinner breakfast. If you can, if you eat breakfast, which by the way, it is not the most important meal of the day. Kellogg's made that up in the sixties when they came out with their cereal line. Yes, we just learned literally right before this that I did not know that. Yes. But Um, everybody, everybody knows the tagline, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I would say if I could add on the fourth thing is I actually have my clients, this is good for anybody else listening. We have been so out of whack with in the nineties, eat every two hours. You're going to break your metabolism. Don't be hungry. Oh my God. Stop it. We are, we all have our own body clock. And what I tell people is you can actually wait till you get hungry to eat breakfast. You're not going to die. Like so many people are afraid that something bad is going to happen and keep track for about three or four days of when you're hungry. And if you're satisfied after you eat, most people are not because they don't know you need to get enough protein and enough fiber to stay full. How many hours between meals? If you eat a good meal, you should not be hungry for about four hours. Right. You know, if you're eating two hours later, you did not get enough at that meal. Take a look at that for three or four days and know when your body is hungry. If you don't want to eat till 11 a.m., you're not going to die. And you are definitely not going to break your metabolism. I promise. Huh? Yeah. You learn something new every day. Yeah. Fascinating. Well, here's the thing. The diet industry wants you to eat more, not less. They want you to eat their bars and their shakes. They don't yes. make money if you don't eat as much. Yes. Sure. No. And right. <laughs> that's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. I've just always been, I don't know. It's funny. I, I of course I think I know everything now, but, um, you know, I just thought if you switch to like a high protein, high veg, you know, egg white veggie omelet, but that's, you know, but that's how you start your day. But if you're not hungry, I'll eat the omelet for lunch instead. It's still- I, I, yeah. I actually asked a 69 year old client that I have, like she gets up and she eats us and I said, are you even hungry? She goes, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And, and she's retired. Part of the routine. Yes. And she's retired. And I said, okay, why don't you wait? Like go for a walk, sit out in your garden, stay busy, but don't, don't wait for the clock to say, oh, it's seven 30. I better eat breakfast right now. She went till nine 30. Wow. That's, that's fine. Yeah. Wow. And with a lot of people working from home, it's not like you can't go to the kitchen and make whatever you want really at any time. Right. So learning your own body clock and not looking at the clock on the wall is going to be key for many people, as well as knowing, like, if you're out and about, here's my favorite one. You guys are going to love this. Ready? Yes. I had a client say, Pam, you just don't understand. I have to go through fast food because she was a realtor and driving all the time. And I was like, are you kidding me? I said, (laughs) okay, here's my fast food for you. I am certain you're driving past many grocery stores go in, go to the deli. All delis have green salads now. Get a green salad and a cooked protein or a sliced turkey. And it's probably faster than whatever line you would sit in in your car because everybody has self-serve or self-checkout right now. And there's your fast food. And she was like, oh. (laughs) (laughs) Aha, an aha moment. How simple was that? Yeah. I I love it. Oh my gosh. Pam, you're, you're amazing. I love you. You're glowing. You're glowing. It's contagious. I love talking about this stuff so much. Yeah. No. And and if you didn't share it, I would have never guessed that you're 54. I was, 
<laughs> when you said that your kids are in your 20s, I thought, oh my God. <laughs> you are, you're gorgeous. I, I would never, ever, ever have guessed, ever. Thank you. Taking care of yourself really does pay off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Do you have anything else? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm like, I can talk to you all day, Pam. And, and you know this from the first time we, we, we've met. I'm like, oh my gosh, you have to be on our show. And so <laughs> what is, if you have any parting remarks for the women who are listening, right? I know you share the, like the, the tips already. More sleep, add water. What else? Add vegetables. Add vegetables. And don't eat if you're not hungry. Don't eat or wait until when you get hungry. And ultimately, it's so interesting, all of these things we all know innately, yeah. right? Like we know when we're thirsty. We, we know when we are tired, we need more sleep. And we know when we, when we eat and hungry, but it's so interesting how we're so bombarded culturally with like, like you said, the, the commercial eat breakfast and now people are eating breakfast and it's like, it's not really getting down to really listening to our own body. And hence, that's why people ultimately at the end of the day, don't even trust themselves because they're not even learning how to listen to their own body. So I think ultimately what I really want to tie this to, and you can share with what you can with like tying this all together, you know, as uh, your parting remarks is that how can we, how can the woman, especially working moms, right? Like considering that, you know, I'm one myself, I'm selfishly asking for myself. Um, how can we really create that structure so that we can take care of ourselves and being able to do what we need to do, especially adding the four things into our schedule? Because I know that's really the challenge, right? For all of us, even like when, when your clients who was like, I need fast food because I don't have enough time. Mm -hmm. The alternative right? Is getting a salad. So what would you say to those women who feel like they don't have time, they can't do mm -hmm. it? What is your best piece of advice for, for them? Well, I would say, first of all, um, as a group exercise instructor, the exercise industry has led us all down a wrong path of thinking we have to work out for an hour every day to get a workout in. On my YouTube channel, I have a five minute playlist, a 10 minute playlist, a 15 minute playlist, and a 20 minute playlist. Your day's busy, you get up, you work out with me for 10 minutes. I do not waste your time. We do not stop. Some minutes is better than no minutes every single day. Yes. If you did 10 minutes a day every day, that's 70 minutes over an hour. That's over, that's five hours a month. Yes. Okay, it doesn't have to be an hour. And ladies, as we get older, you don't want to crush it. The harder you work out, the more hungry you will be, which will lead you to eat more. Focusing on strength training is going to be your best bet. Cardio, please stop. Please stop thinking cardio is the magic. It is not. Strength will do better and more for you every time. And most of my videos are either all strength or strength with a little bit of hit. But even a five-minute one in your kitchen, push-ups against the kitchen counter, doing squats on a chair. So making sure you do it at the beginning of the day, because Dee, Dee yes. and Stephanie, we all know once the day gets going, nobody wants to do it at 5 p.m. You're done. Mm -hmm. So doing that. Second of all, making sure that at least one time a week, if not twice, you have enough food in your house to have good, healthy meals for you. If there's not healthy stuff, you're going to grab for the junk. And by the way, please do not buy anything on the cereal aisle. There is nothing good for you there. And do not believe the packaging. They lie. They lie. It's Cheerios all a marketing scheme. Cheerios are not heart healthy. Unless you're in an extra saucer, you should not be eating Cheerios. Come on. It's nothing. Okay. So food, exercise, make sure you do it first thing in the morning. Something is better than nothing. Do not think you have to do an hour. Make sure you always have enough protein and enough vegetables around. Now, I just told somebody who wants to cut vegetables. I don't buy the big party tray for your house and then put it in little baggies so you can grab it and take it back to your desk. Genius. I mean, we are all very busy and some people love to prep and cut amazing, go for it. But if you don't spend an extra $4 and buy the huge tray, and then you have veggies for the whole week. Yeah. So at two to four, when your brain wants sugar, cause it does, cause you're tired. Oh, there's your snap peas. There's your jicama. There's your pepper, whatever it is. You can grab that big glass of water, mm. club soda with a lime, whatever you like, um, and make sure you set your alarm at the end of the night to go to bed. If you have trouble tearing yourself away from everything that's on Netflix or Hulu or whatever, 
because that seven to nine hours of sleep is so, so important as well as try not, I know this is difficult. I know, try not to look at your phone for the last hour to two hours before you go to bed. That is so important for your brain to unwind. You'll get much better sleep if you are just not. And you know what? Your emails will be there tomorrow. Your social media will be there tomorrow. Taking the time to relax is really, really important. Yes. Oh my gosh. I, I want, can you stay on with us all day? <laughs> well, I, I did not mention my free gift for yeah. your viewers. Yes. I have a private Facebook group called the Perfect Balance Tribe where okay. I post every day. I have contests. I go to Facebook. I go on Facebook live once a week just to have this, these kind of conversations, whatever comes up weekends, holidays, free month for anybody that wants to date me for a month and try me out. Ooh. <laughs> and then if you don't like me, we can break up. And after that, it's $14.99 a month, but it's just like this conversation we just had. It's how to help you navigate every aspect that you have trouble with. Uh, we celebrate the members wins. Most women in the group are over 45. Like the, uh, it's a mature group. I have two men. They're not very active, but they're in there. Um, okay. And I have videos in there. I have so much content for people just to really dig deep into. You want to change? Let's change together. I will help you do that. Amazing. That. This is so right. incredible, Pam. Thank you so much for all of your wisdom and your shares. And I could definitely see that, yeah, you are not, no nonsense. You're just direct, you just go straight into it, right? And so that's how you get the results. And so I really appreciate all of what you have shared so far. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, I hope you all are listening and taking on whatever it is that you can practice, but those steps are super, super simple. And, and I would say basics. And so get back to the essentials, ladies, and um, build yourself from the inside. So thank yeah. you Kim, so much for your time. And yes. we're excited to share this information with the tribe. Ladies, it's been lovely to chat with you. And I have one party comment for everybody. If your grandparents or great grandparents would not recognize what you are eating, don't eat it. Oh my God. I love that. <laughs> she, every time she's like, I'm going to go, I have one more thing to say. And last thing, last thing I promise. <laughs> I love it. So they obviously would not know what the Cheerio is. They would not know what a protein bar is. No. They would not. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I love oh, it. It's hilarious. That Pam, is hilarious. I cannot wait to date you. I'm going to date you. <laughs> I'm going to date you for a month. Hopefully Yay. it's long term. <laughs> I, I would love a long-term commitment from you, Stephanie, really. That'd be all wonderful. right. All right.